Please bow your heads with me. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we are here today because you've drawn us. We're here not to listen to me, but to hear your word, to know your truth, and we are here to be changed. So we call upon the power from on high to do your work in our lives right now. And we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Today we continue our sermon series on discipleship and the call to follow God. James Earl Jones, Bruce Willis, Bo Jackson, and Mark Anthony. Do you know these people? Do you know what they have in common? Beyond just the fact that they are famous, each of these men in their early years had a problem with stuttering. Did you know that? Each of these men suffered from a speech problem that would make most people never dream of getting up in front of people. And yet in spite of that difficulty, each one of them earned or earns a living being in front of people. How is that possible? Well, each of these men and scores of others chose not to give up. They chose the hard path in life. It would have been much easier for them to just say, hey, you know what? I am not built to talk in front of people. This is the way the Lord has made me, so I'm not even going to attempt it. And yet if they'd have done that, what would they and the world have missed out on if they had chosen the easy path in life? Very famous poet and poem. You've probably heard this from Robert Frost. The end of this poem goes like this. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the road less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. I took the road less traveled by. You've no doubt heard this phrase as well, the path of least resistance. Have you heard that before? That's what water does. It always takes the path of least resistance. But is that what we should do? You see, my friends, we remember, we celebrate, and we honor people who chose the path of most resistance. So this morning, as we continue our series on discipleship in the church, we're going to be talking about Jesus' call upon our lives to be a disciple. Last week, we talked about how Making disciples was easier than we thought, and, and maybe being a disciple might be harder than we thought. So as we look into Jesus' teachings, let's see if He's asking us to take the path of least resistance or the path of most resistance. If you have your Bibles with you, I'd encourage you to open them up. If you don't have a Bible with you, well, then scoot over next to someone who does. Or if you have an app on your phone, go ahead and turn that on as well. We're going to be looking in the Gospel of Matthew today, and we're going to be looking at Jesus' call for discipleship. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 10 to begin. Matthew chapter 10, verse 38 and 39, Jesus' call for us to discipleship. Matthew chapter 10, verse 38 says, And he who does not take his cross and follow me, follow after me, is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Jesus is talking to people who, who already believe in him and who are wanting to follow him. He's talking to us, amen? Amen. Does this sound like Jesus is calling us to the easy life? Is Christ calling us to take the, just take the path of least resistance? Not at all. Is there a cost in following Christ? Is there a price to pay in discipleship? Yes, there is. Now, salvation, that's a different story. Salvation is a free gift, amen? 
But living for Christ is not easy. Just listen to what Jesus says if you turn back a couple chapters to Matthew chapter 8. In verse 19, He describes this to, again, people who were wanting to follow Him. Matthew chapter 8, verse 19, then a certain scribe came and said to Him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. That's a great thing to tell Jesus, isn't it? That's good motivation. I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus makes sure this guy knows where that will entail. Verse 20, and Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and and bury my father. Seems like a good request. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Jesus doesn't shy away from saying hard things sometimes, does he? And he says that following him must be our number one focus of life in spite of the hardships that may come. And this has to encompass all that we are and all that we do. I had a friend years ago at Union College who asked me if I'd ever played the game Trivial Pursuit. Have you played that game before? It's a game of questions and trivia, and and I used to play it all the time when I was young with my grandparents. In that game, you answer these questions from different categories, and you move your piece around the board, and as you answer certain questions, you get to take a little pie piece and stick it in your game pie piece. And he said, you know, as I've been thinking about life, I used to think that my faith was just one piece of the pie that went in. So, but as I've been studying, I realize now that my faith in Jesus is itself the whole pie, and it's everything else. It's work and studies, family and friends. Those are all the other pieces that need to fit into my faith. Discipleship affects everything that we do. 1 John chapter 2, verse 6 says, Whoever claims to live in Him, to live in Jesus, must walk as Jesus walked. That's a high calling. That's a hard road. Maybe you're thinking, but why? Pastor, why does it matter how we live as long as we just believe in Jesus? Well, it matters, friends, because eyes are watching you. Little eyes are watching you. Older eyes are watching you too. And your life can and will influence people for God or not. Years ago when I was at Union, uh, my wife worked at Madonna as a nurse. And we were just brand new Christians at this point in time. And one day she went into the cafeteria to eat, and she saw a lady stop before she ate, and she saw this lady pray. And Jeanette, in her mind, thought, well, good grief. Here I am. At one point in time, I'm going to be a pastor's wife, and I don't pray before every meal. She thought, I need to start praying more. Now, this lady who prayed that day She has no idea that her simple act of praying before that meal forever changed my wife's life. Discipleship and what we do is so important. This is how taking the path of most resistance makes a difference in our world. I had a life-changing experience a few years ago, actually quite a few years ago, back when I was a youth pastor in Kansas City. I was invited to come Wednesday night and speak to the Adventure Club. I love to do that, love to talk to kids, so I did, and I talked to all the kids that night about doing the right thing in life. And I'll never forget what happened next. After I got done with my talk that explained everything about choosing the right thing to do, a hand went up. It was little Jonathan. He had a question. I thought, no problem. He's got questions. I'm a pastor. I got answers. I said, yes, Jonathan. This little eight-year-old boy asked me after I told him about doing the right thing. He said, but pastor, how do we know what the right thing to do is? And I learned that night that little kids ask tough questions sometimes. What's, how do we know what the right thing is to do? How would you answer that? 
I didn't come prepared with an answer for that question. And I thought, "Uh uh-oh. And I paused for a moment, and I praised the Lord that God gave me the answer. And I just spoke, and there it was. And I said, well, Jonathan, most times the right thing to do in a situation is the harder thing to do. And God had taught those kids and myself about discipleship. Now, I praise the Lord that His grace is always present for us when we don't choose the right thing to do, when we don't take the hard path. I praise Him that when I went there that night, I didn't have that answer, but God speaks when we listen. God had shown me the path of most resistance, and I want to show it to each of you. So now, to help all of us understand Jesus' calling for how He wants us to live, It's time for everybody's favorite part of a Pastor Michael sermon. That's right. I know it's been too long. You've been waiting for this. It's time for another episode of Congregation Participation. Yes. Don't go slinking down in your seats now. We are going to have fun today. We can have fun and learn at the same time. Amen? So today we're going to play a game. And the game show that we're going to play is actually called, strangely enough, The Path of Most Resistance. So I need three contestants to help me with this game show that we're going to do. And there are actually going to be some prizes for this. And I know that there are some people who think that they're safe when they sit in the back (laughs) of the church. And you're really not, because I'm not chained to that pulpit. I can walk around. So I need some help today. So I need a young person first off, and there's Lindsay, who thought she was safe by sitting in the middle of the pew, but I know you can squeeze your way out of there. So if you'd head on up, it's almost like Price is Right, come on down. Uh, Let's see who else. We've got Shantae. Would you come and join me up at the front too? And we'll make it three for three, picking from the back. Kent, you sat in the very last pew thinking that you had a quick escape, but would you come up here and and join me as well? This is going to be fun. This is very pain-free, at least for me, but uh, you guys will have fun today. So come on up here onto the, onto the platform. We are going to play The Path of Most Resistance. Come on up here, Lindsay. We're going to let you go first, and then Shantae, and then Kent, we're going to have you be the closer here. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to describe a situation for you, and then I'm going to give you a multiple choice. You're already back in school, aren't you? Yeah, unfortunately, she says. Well, we'll see if you can handle this. I'm going to give you a multiple choice, and what I'm going to ask each of you to do is in this situation I described, it's your job to pick the path of most resistance, the harder thing to do, the right thing to do, okay? So, first, Lindsay, your story, what's happening here, you see a friend at school named Butch. You don't have any friends at school named Butch, did you? Okay, I tried to pick an odd name. All right, so you see a friend named Butch, and you see him cheating on a test. You observe it. What should you do? Here are your choices. Should you just ignore the cheating? It's not my problem and continue taking your test. Or should you wait till recess and then start telling all your classmates what you saw Butch do? Or option number, option C, should you go to Butch after the test and talk to him and encourage him to go to the teacher and confess what he did. Which do you think you should do? C. C. Let's see if she's right. Sure enough, she picked the path of most resistance. That's right. You got it. All right. She's excited. And as I said, there are awards today. There's prizes for choosing the correct answer. So let's see what your prize is. Are you curious what your prize is? Today, because you got it right, you have received a seat upgrade. Here at the church, just like when you're at the football game or the baseball game, sometimes they come and they grab someone, poor guys who have to sit in the back in the cheap seats, and they move them to the front. You and your whole row can come right up here and sit. And this is, what a wonderful gift, right? No? No. (laughs) Well, thank you for helping. You can go back either spot. I've saved these for you. So if you guys want them, they're waiting for you. Thank you, Lindsay. Okay, Shantae. Thank you for coming up here. Very big and brave of you. Now, you're not back in school yet, but you're getting ready to give tests because Shantae is a professor at Union College. So let's see if you can handle answering 
a test question. All right, so we're going to give you a, a story as well. Now, Shantae, this is, this is hypothetical, okay? And in fact, it doesn't really fit for you yet because you're not married yet, right? That happy day is coming next summer. But we're just going to pretend, okay? You're hypothetical. In the future, this would never happen to you. But let's just pretend. Oh, do they look happy? No. They don't look happy. Let's pretend that there's a couple. Maybe it's you and Tony that at some point in time are having some struggles, having some concerns in your marriage. What should you do? What is the path of most resistance? Is it A, just ignore things and assume they'll get better? Or is it letter B, talk to a nice coworker of the opposite sex who is such a great listener? Is that what you should do? Or should you, let her see, talk to your spouse about your concerns and your issues and seek counseling, seek help? Which of those three do you think? I think we should do C. She chose letter C as well, and let's see if you're right. Did she? Sure enough, she did. She chose the path of most resistance. That's right. It'd be far easier to just kind of ignore things, right? Or, and, but those first two choices, ignoring things or maybe talking to someone else, that's not going to help. In fact, it could very much make things worse. So you chose the right answer, so you too get a prize this morning. Are you excited? Let's check the board to see what you have won since you chose a path. Today, you get to have your picture taken after church with Pastor Andy. That is a wonderful gift right there. There he is. So after the service, you can go just, just like that, and you can have your picture taken here. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you so much for playing. We'll let you go back down. All right, Kent. We saved the best for last. He wants to know what the prize is. Well, you're just going to have to wait on that. You're going to have to wait. All right, here we've got a very tricky situation I'm going to describe. Now, it would never happen here at Piedmont, but I hear tale that it may happen at other churches. But let's pretend that someone at church upsets you. They make you mad. They say something, and they, uh, you are hot. You are really upset. What should you do? Should you, letter A, stop going to that church, never set foot in the door again? That's option one, or A. Letter B, should you go and talk to other church members and tell them what that person did to you? That's number B. Letter B. Letter C third option, should you just go tell the pastor, because after all, it's his job to fix all conflict in the church. What do I win? Well, hold on. There is another option here. This is the hardest one, because there's four choices. Or should you choose letter D? Go and talk to the person who upset you. Pray together and try to work things out. So should you, A, never set foot in the door of that church again, B, talk to everybody else about what that person did, C, go talk to the pastor because he can fix everything, or D, go talk to the person who upset you? I'm going to go with D. You're going to go with D? Yeah, I'm going to go with D. All right, let's see. Do you think he got it right, everyone? Yeah. You think he got it? Let's see. Sure enough, he got the path of most resistance. So let's see, Kent, what you won this morning. You have won... <gasps> You've won our grand prize today. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what the grand prize is. Now, you may feel the urge, like the folks at Price is Right, to jump up and down when they win a new car. Try to, a little bit of decorum here. We are in what church. Kind of <laughs> what kind of car is it, he asks. <laughs> Better than a car. Today, because you've answered correctly, you will receive an autographed copy of the sermon notes today. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. You're doing a great job controlling your enthusiasm. This is, but this will probably be a collector's item someday. You get to take that and you get to, don't read it before, you, before it's done though. You'll know the ending. But uh, thank you, Kent, for coming up and thank you to Lindsay and Shantae. Thank you for playing The Path of Most Resistance. Sounds kind of silly, doesn't it? But... But what would we do if we were in those instances? What if we had to make those decisions? 
We can joke around about them, and sometimes when it's like this and it's sterile, of course we know the answer. But when you're right in the middle of it, sometimes it's hard to know which path to take. But God calls us to make the hard decisions, amen? Accepting Jesus as our Savior and Lord is free. We cannot earn it. But living for Jesus every day is not easy. Jesus describes it this way in our Scripture text for the morning. He says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. And in verse 14, He says, Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. The path of most resistance is not easy, and yet Jesus calls us to it. But you might be thinking, how is this even possible? How can we live for God every day? How can we always choose the path of most resistance? Well, my friends, there's good news today. Amen? You come to church, you got to find the good news. And the good news is that we need, just like we need Jesus, to save us from our sins, just like we needed Him to die on the cross to pay the price that we could not pay, we also need Jesus and the Holy Spirit to live in us in order to change us in how we live. This is not something we do on our own. If you leave this place and say, today I am going to do it all for Jesus, you will fall on your face and you'll make mistakes. But if we leave here and say, Lord, I need your help, there is help in walking the path of most resistance. How do we walk the path of most resistance? If you still got your Bibles there, open them up to Matthew chapter 11. Let's find the answer. Sometimes you can go to church and you can hear the problem, you can hear the situation, but you never really get the answer for how to do it. Today, Jesus is going to give us the answer. Matthew chapter 11. In verse 28, Jesus tells us how we can walk the path of most resistance. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Anybody out there who's been laboring? Anybody out there today who feels heavy laden? Jesus says, I'll give you rest. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and, I will, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus gives us the answer for how we can walk the path of most resistance. The answer is simple. Jesus says you have to get yoked. So there it is. You just have to get yoked in order to walk the path of most resistance, Right? Maybe not exactly that type of yoke Jesus was thinking about. He uses the example of an ox yoke, which worked great for farming societies. Maybe not as much today, so let's see if I can explain. This is, I love this illustration that Jesus gives. Have you ever heard the phrase, stubborn as an ox? Has anybody ever called you that before? Oh, you're just stubborn as an ox. It's a true phrase because oxen themselves tend to be very stubborn animals. They're hard to train because it's just in their nature to resist. So how do you train a young ox who's never worked before with, uh, with this setup? What the farmer will do is he'll take the young new ox and he will yoke him. This is the yoke here, this wooden piece right there. He will yoke him to an older, stronger ox. And then the farmer will tell the old ox, time to go. And the old ox will pull forward. And as soon as he does that, the young ox, just by nature, just yanks back. I'm not going, puts his feet in. And the old ox says, no, this is what we do, and pulls forward. And the battle ensues. But eventually, the young ox wears out, and he learns, I better get going. And after enough time passes of being yoked together, something amazing happens. The farmers will say that they can take the yoke off of them, and then something wild happens. Because the old ox, after they're not connected anymore, the old ox will go over here to get a drink, 
and the young ox just follows right beside him. The old ox will go over, time to eat, so he goes over to the hay to get something to eat, the young ox right beside him, even though they're no longer connected. Jesus says, get yoked to me. He's the older, stronger ox, amen? Because in life, each of us stubbornly pull back. But Jesus is stronger, and he pulls the other way. And as long as we stay yoked, Jesus doesn't wear out. But he wears us out, and he will wear out our rebellious nature if we choose to stay yoked to him. And if we do it long enough, Jesus goes this way, and we follow right beside him. Jesus goes over here and says this, and we're doing it too, because it just became our nature. This is why Jesus can say in verse 30 that my burden is light, because he says, I will rock the road with you. So even though Jesus calls us and takes us down the path of most resistance, the path of honesty, the path of forgiveness, the path of faithfulness. Jesus is strong enough to help us walk that path, and He's willing to be yoked with us and carry the load. The key to discipleship and living for Jesus is the same as the key to salvation. We have to be connected to Jesus because that makes all the difference in the world. I want to leave you with two powerful questions this morning that each of us have to answer. What are we willing to die for in life? Have you figured that out yet? And is your answer Jesus? Are you willing to die for Him? Many Christians face that question every day in this world, and maybe someday we will too. But maybe the more powerful question today is, not what are you willing to die for, but what are you willing to live for? And is Jesus also your answer? Connecting to Jesus is the only way to discipleship. It's the only way to walk the path of most resistance. And when we connect to Him through prayer and Bible study, we cannot do it part way, friends. Jesus said, you can't do it half time with me. Ladies, how many of you, if that special guy came around and on that special day got on his knee and he said, darling, will you marry me? And the tears well up in your eyes, but he continues and he says, will you marry me? Can we be married part time? How many of you would just be melt? He says, well, let's be married five days a week. I mean, that's a, quite a lot. That's over half. Let's get married five days a week, but on the weekends, let's see other people. How many of you ladies would say yes? Not a one. Of course not. Because when you're married, you've got to be married all the time. Because marriage changes who you are. Being a disciple of Christ changes all your life too. So friends, let's follow Jesus down the path of most resistance. It's not an easy road. Anyone who tells you otherwise is trying to sell you something. But Jesus will walk with you, and He will shine His light on the path, and He will help you to shine your light as you walk the path. And then as you walk that path, you'll shine, and maybe someone else will get to see you, and they'll decide to get yoked to Jesus too. Almighty Father in heaven, thank you for this high calling. You call us to not just believe, but to live for you. We cannot do it alone. So, Lord, we ask for your help. Come into our hearts right now that we may always hear your voice when you say, this is the way, walk in it. Lord Jesus, take control. And when we pull back on the yoke, just pull back all the stronger until we just want to follow you everywhere we go. And then help us to shine this light so that others will come to know you too. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.